Oh, good morning. Hey, I was just heading down to my neighbor Dan's house. Summer's just about here, and I'm trying to get my yard and garden in shape. I'm told Dan has quite the green thumb, so I want to see if he can help me with my plants. Hi, Dan. Ted, I was just going to give you a call. Oh, really? Yeah, I wanted to see if you could give me a few ideas. I want to buy a plant stand for my wife's flowers, but I can't find anything I like. Tell you what, I'll help you with your plant stand if you could help me with my plants. Sure, you got a deal. Okay, here's what I got for the plant stand. This is a scaled down model of what I plan to build. There's three levels for the plants and it can be folded up and stored away for the winter season. Now I'm not sure if this plant stand is going to be under a porch or exposed to the elements. So I want to build it out of a good exterior wood that's not prone to rot or decay. Now there's a lot of good choices out there such as cedar, teak, white oak, but I got a great deal on some sassafras from my local sawmill. Now the other thing I need to consider is the hardware. It should either be zinc plated or stainless steel. And of course I want to use a good glue that's going to hold up to the weather and the change in seasons. From the model I was able to figure out the dimensions to the full size plant stand. And I made a parts list so as not to get them screwed up during the building process. Now I've already ripped and cross cut the wood and I'm going to start building the platform for the plants. The rails will have a quarter inch groove cut lengthwise into them and the styles will have this tongue mating with the groove. I'm going to make this by using a tongue and groove router set. I'm going to start with making the groove first. Next I need to make the tongue on the rails. Now this cross grain usually causes splintering on the workpiece when it comes out the back side. So to prevent this, have a sacrificial board behind your workpiece mounted to the miter gauge. Now when you make your pass, it comes out crisp and clean. As I mentioned before, this plant stand is probably going to be exposed to the elements. So, I'm using a type 2 water resistant glue. I want to make sure I get the glue spread on both the tongue and the groove. To keep even spacing, I'm using a spacer between each rail. Now I got these clamped up and I'll just set it aside to dry. The legs are next. Now the placement of these holes are really important. So once you've measured correctly, I'm going to clamp them together with some blue tape and then I'll drill them at the same time. Oh yeah, and one more tip, make sure you have another sacrificial board underneath your workpiece so that you don't drill in to your bench top. I also want to round over the ends of the legs here so it'll fold up easier. I'll do this first by cutting the corners off on the bandsaw. And then I'll finish rounding the edges on the disc sander. Now I have one more tip before I'm ready to assemble the stand. Even though I'm using a good exterior wood, the legs are still going to be exposed to constant moisture in the ground. I'm going to apply a coat of glue to the end grain at the bottom of the legs. This will seal the wood and prevent water from wicking up into the grain.
Well, what do you think? Not too bad, huh? I finished it off with some deck stain and a good exterior finish. Now let's get this baby folded up and down to Dan's house. Well, here you go, Dan. What do you think? That's great. It's exactly what I was hoping for. And I think my wife's gonna love it. Oh, and I have something for you too, Chad. Wow, you are good, Dan. Thanks. And thank you for joining us today. Come back next time and see what's going on in our neighborhood. Man, I can't believe this is the same plant. Yeah, I just put some chili pepper and some salt. Thank you.